ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's October 8th, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day. And um, Matt, it's Friday, the weekend's here. Uh, everyone's ready to go to happy hour. Kind of a, I'm not going to say it's a, it's a light news day because I don't know that those exist anymore right now, but um, kind of like a lukewarm, I would say, news day. Uh, without question, some of the analysis pieces that we've got on the site this morning are probably um, the best subjects for our conversation, um, beginning with Jim Martz's analysis on the fact that this, is, this five-game skid is the longest that Miami has had since 1978 and uh man i'll tell you it, it, it's it's kind of stunning when you look at it from that perspective uh but i mean it hasn't happened by accident uh th- this is this is a problem that has existed for several years the streak against power five competition has reached four on multiple occasions i think four different occasions in the past seven years and now it's up to five and uh the, the ship is leaking, and uh, Manny's running out of time to, to plug those leaks, Matt. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's no secret that, like, you know, things aren't real good um, for Miami football right now. But, um, you know, it sort of puts it into uh, perspective when you hear, you know, 1978 was the last time that they lost five Power Five games in a row. I mean, you know, that's, I was seven years old. You know, I was looking at some stuff today, like the most popular stuff, like Grease was the most popular movie. Um, you know, The Deer Hunter won the Best Picture for the Academy Awards. You know, I mean, it was, it was a long, basically it was a long time ago is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, what inspired you to look that up? I, you know, I'm a history buff. <laughs> so, uh, so it was, it was, it, it was a long, long time ago that Miami was like losing at this kind of rate. And, you know, Miami fans have good reason to be embarrassed. Like, you know, I was thinking today, like, can you even, you know, wear Miami stuff out and about now if you're a Miami fan? Like, it, it's embarrassing, you know, to, to wear Miami stuff out with the way the program is. It's, it should make people angry. You know, you spend a lot of money to wear your Miami stuff proudly, and it's like they're not performing to the level where you can even wear stuff outside that says Miami on it, you know, or people make fun of you. you know? I, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't think it's that, it's that bad, but it's pretty uh, bad. It's pretty I bad. Mean, I mean, I talked to her, I talked to a recruit whose teammates are making fun of him. These are Colorado state, Colorado state commitments, making fun of him. I mean, it's like, it's gotten out of hand. That's not good to hear. Uh, but I mean, obviously it's at all levels. You got boosters upset. You got, um alumni upset you got play former players upset uh obviously current fans upset and here we are in an open week where nothing can even be done about it so uh they've been out practicing um fight the other day we talked about that yesterday uh after uh thursday's practice rumors started circulating that a, a, a couple players or player had, had walked out of practice uh those were not true uh, but it, it's just a, it's just a, a crap show right now. It really is. I mean, um, and and people are more than willing to to pile on. And uh, the only thing that can change it would be an upset victory at North Carolina. And you know, we're seeing indications that they're trying to amp up uh, the heat, so to speak, on the players a little bit. Uh, you know, um, and you know that's creating some tension obviously within the organization and i don't know if that's good bad and in in in, in, in um, you know I, I guess it'll depend on the results but uh you know things are just not hunky dory and like i said i think the only thing that could change it matt would be like a stunning victory in chapel hill next week i i don't know how you change the narrative the way it's already happened i don't know that one win does it i think if they win the rest of their games and like look really good doing it and the young players are stepping up that's what'll buy Manny Diaz a lot more time and a lot more leeway. I think anything short of that 
it's going to be a rough, rough off season if they don't make a coaching change. You know, um, and they, yeah, they I mean, can't not make a coaching change if this keeps going the way it's going. Oh, then, if, if, yeah, yeah. They, I yeah, think they, they have. To, I think they have to win the rest of their games and look good doing it and show that these guys have progressed and they can coach. I mean, right now it's like they've all, all the players have gotten worse. I mean, it's like you know, it's it's 1978 level bad, and. Yeah, I don't think one win against North Carolina, which, let's face it, if North Carolina was maybe undefeated and ranked in the top 10, okay, you know, that would be a game changer. But, like, there's no team left on Miami's schedule where you say, wow, they beat that team. I mean, North Carolina has two losses, you know? Um, Like, what other team on the schedule would you say, oh, if Miami wins that game, then that shows every, you know, that shows that Miami's back. They should have won the rest of these games. But that's what we said before the season. And the fact that now we're just, you know, if they beat North Carolina, everything's okay? No, I, I don't buy that for a second. No, and I don't think running the table is reality either. So well, if it's not, then there, there's going to be a <laughs> listen. There's not going to be a lot of happy fans unless yeah. Miami wins the rest of his games. Maybe one close loss is is okay the rest of the way. Maybe um, you know you get the coastal championship game and you got blown out in that. Then what? You know, like they 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 have to look good the rest of the season. Period, and that usually means winning games. Well, for those of you out there that are. Uh, fans of real talk on this subject i encourage you to make sure if you haven't already watched it to make the time to watch the lamar thomas show this week a lot of conversation on all of these subjects i think you'll find it extremely insightful to hear what brett romberg had to say what earl little had to say what ryan mcneil had to say they all brought so much to the table and it really was riveting uh conversation and um so I, i encourage everybody to make the time to, to watch that if you haven't already. Uh, another an- analysis piece that we do today, um, the five things that Miami needs to fix before it gets on the airplane next Friday to go to North Carolina. And Matt, we probably could have gone deeper than five, but we isolated it down to the five that, you know, that, that we thought were most pertin- pertinent. And the, the, the question is that at this point, You know, you've gone through spring practice. You've gone through fall practice. You've played five ball games. Uh, Are these things really fixable at this stage of the game? I mean, yeah. Like, basically what we wrote about is is things that they can fix. Like, that's the whole point. We're not just saying, oh, woe is me. There's no fixing this problem, (laughs) you know? (laughs) I mean, that's the idea of what we wrote this morning. Like, they can change the way they're calling the plays on offense. They don't have to run up the middle every third and one and fourth and one. They they can move the pocket, and, and there's ways to adjust for a bad offensive line, which now they realize they have, and they, now they have a bye week to, to figure that out. Will Mallory can start catching passes again. He doesn't have to be a bad part of the offense. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, fully evaluate the young guys. You know, these, these older players have shown they're not going to win games. It's time to let some younger guys give it their shot. I mean, Leonard Taylor knows half the plays. He looked better than the other defensive linemen playing the game. Like, if they don't have to play, they're playing better, then so be it. You know, I mean, enough with the way they're doing things now. Like, Wayman Steed is going to be a step slow to the hole every time. Maybe a younger guy, you know, maybe doesn't know what he's doing quite as much. Maybe, you know, he doesn't have the experience. But you got to give it a chance. You got to try it because what they're doing now will not work. We already know that. I mean, there, there's no other option to me. So, basically, you know, you know, and, and we talk about, like, Xavier Restrepo, like, the, the attitude. I mean, it was – so sad, and nobody talked about this, but after that Thursday night game, I, I turned to you, you know, we sit next to each other in the press box, six feet apart, and um, <laughs> and I said to you, look at Xavier Restrepo. The entire Miami Hurricanes team had left the poor guy just desolate on the sidelines by himself, by himself. Yep. with his hands in his head, and they just left him there. Yep. They need every player to be Xavier Restrepo. So anyway, read the column today. You know, read read the opinion art piece today. I mean, it's it's very telling to me on what the fixes need to be. All right. Obviously, it's open season on recruits right now, and um, Miami still has those nine commits, but other people are trying to get them interested and are trying to sway them. So far, nobody has been successful. Um, but today, we bring you the story of Landon Ibietta in Louisiana, uh, LSU's kind of keeping him on a string a little bit, like hanging in there. Uh, he says right now he's not interested in that. You know, you can read read about that in the story, uh, just about the continued pursuit from LSU. Um, also have our regular update on quarterback commit Ja'Curry Brown. 
Uh, obviously, he's also is continuing to get interest. Um, he's midway through his year. So we give you an update on how things are going with, with Jacuri. And then, I mean, it's, it's never too early to look at quarterbacks of the future. And there's some really good ones in South Florida. I mean, one of them is up in Palm Beach, Tyler Aronson. Uh, a second that, man, I have been really impressed with the few times that I've seen him live is uh, Adrian Posse from Miami Pace. A real good-looking kid. Uh, I miss a 2024 recruit we're talking about. Uh, he's a sophomore in high school right now. A kid 6'4 and looks ready for college already. And uh, so we've got uh, an update on him and, and his plans to come to the Miami-North Carolina State game. So a uh, little bit of recruiting thrown in there today, a couple analysis pieces. Uh, if you haven't seen our podcast this week of – you know, like I said, the Lamar Thomas show and Kane Sport Live make some time over the weekend uh, to do so. I think that you'll you, you'll you'll like those quite a bit. And uh, that's about it. I mean, we'll you know, it'll be a quiet weekend. Everybody enjoy sitting at the television and watching football, and probably wishing that your Hurricanes, uh, in many cases, were playing at the level that you're seeing some of these other teams around the country play. So for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. We wish everybody a great weekend, and we'll be back at you on Monday morning. Thanks for watching, everybody.